Hi, it's time for another oscilloscope tutorial and I've actually done, I, if you don't know, a whole bunch of oscilloscope tutorials. I've got a YouTube playlist link, which I'll link in at the end and down below. It's currently got about 30 videos on it for various oscilloscope tutorials. Anyway, this one today is a little bit more uh, obscure and not available on all scopes, but it could be really valuable if you're looking at two correlated signals that are quite far apart. So let's take a look at it. We're using our Keysight uh, 3000X series because this happens to have the uh, feature that we're looking for that's going to enable this and this is really interesting. So what I've got here, channel A, channel B, and I've just got uh, two signals here. They're actually like little bursts of uh, square wave here like this and uh, it's the same on channel 2 down here. But of course to go in and see channel 2 that's our problem. How do we go in and look at channel 2? Oh, it's easy, Dave. Go in there, trigger, select your source, go in there, and we're now triggering off channel 2. Thank you very much. And we can go in there and have a look at channel 2. Okay, that's great, but how can we look at both of them at the same time with any sort of detail? Ha! I know what you're saying, Dave, that's easy too. All you got to do is single shot capture that, put it at a reasonable uh, time base, and then zoom in. Ah, oh, look at that. Depending on our memory depth, we've come a gut, so there's not much detail in there, is there? That's pretty awful. And then, of course, we can scroll over to channel one over here. Did I call it channel A before? <laughs> Anyway, old school. Okay, so we can view independent ones and we can go in there with our cursors and we can measure things and we can, you know, count the number of cycles and we can, we can analyze each one independently, but it's kind of like a multi-step process. If we actually run this thing, how do we actually get uh, both of these signals on the screen at the same time correlated together? Hmm, you might think it's impossible, but it's not. So pause this video and try to figure out how you can get both of these zoomed in like that, so one above the other, so that we can then compare them. Because often you'll have uh, two correlated signals like this, one might affect the other, but they're actually spaced a long way apart. And you want to see uh, the response, you know, one compared to the other. You want to overlay them. How can you do it? So this seemingly impossible task is actually very easy for an advanced scope that has this feature. Let's go into trigger here and the different uh, types over here. And you might be like modern scopes just have a ton of different types of trigger, you know, runt pulses, nth edge burst, rise and fall and all that sort of jazz. But what we want is this rather obscure one down here called OR. So let's actually select that and if you have a look down here, we now get an option to set up all, it's got all of the channels, about the four analog channels and the four digital channels like this. So what this is going to allow us to do is it exactly as the name implies, it's an OR trigger, just like a digital logic function OR. So it can trigger on channel one OR channel 2. So at the moment we've only got trigger 1 enabled here and we can select uh, the slope we want, rising, falling or either or don't care for channel 1 and then we'll select channel 2 and we can select rising for channel 2 as well. And bingo, if we go in there, look at that magic. Now this is actually quite amazing. We've actually got both signals now, what looks like they're time correlated, but there's not. There's actually a big difference um, in time between them as you uh, saw before, but as well, as you can still see if we kind of do that. And if we single shot capture that, only one of them will ever be there at any one time. But it's just kind of essentially randomly triggering off either channel one or channel 2, hence the trigger type function called all. Isn't that fantastic? And you can tell that they're uh, sort of swapping between them because of the thick look at, at the line down the bottom. Well, oh, I, I just bloody touch screens. The, the line down the bottom, so you can tell that it's actually uh, overlaying that on the uh, screen multiple times. But yeah, that's beautiful. So now we can actually get in there and see that our channel 2 signal is actually half the length of the one at the top. And then we can just go in there 
and analyze those. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Love it. But you've got to remember, you could actually come a gutter with this because if you just, like, called your colleague over, hey, Bill, come over here, check this out, and uh, look at these signals here, they would, with, if they didn't know if you weren't in the trigger screen like that, how would you tell? You would think that they're time correlated, wouldn't you? You would think, oh, look, they're both starting at the same time. Yeah, obviously, the only thing that's telling you is that little trigger enunciator up there, the little green one. That's just showing the OR symbol. And, well, unless you know what OR triggering is actually doing, there's nothing else on here to indicate that these are not proper time correlated signals. So the only indication you're going to get is if you hit that stop button and you only get the one. Or you hit the single shot button and you go, aha, those two aren't really correlated. It's a trap. It's a trap. So we're effectively viewing both in real time, although the scope's actually uh, sort of like altern and the old school alternate trigger on analog scopes that jump in between them, but it's doing it so fast that they're both on there at the same time. So this OR trigger type is effectively uh, replacing the alternate trigger function that they used to have on some old school analog scopes. So I, like, I really don't know why modern digital scopes don't have alternate trigger as such and, and call it as such because it's actually really quite handy. But this Keysight one does actually have it in addition to pattern triggering as we'll see. And because they're on the uh, same time base, they are genuine, like this one is genuinely half the length of that. This is not a dual time base scope, which I might have to go into. Anyway, that's another rare feature of uh, scopes these days. We can actually go in there and measure various things if we want. And you can muck around to your heart's content. And you can get both on the screen at once. It could be really handy, essential for niche applications. And by the way, it may not just automatically uh, work like this. You may actually have to go into your trigger menu down here and you may actually have to change your hold off like this, depending on your signals and the distance uh, between them and stuff like that. If we take that up far enough, we'll probably see one vanish. Yep, they are. And yep, we've, we've come a gutter and the other one's vanished now. And sometimes you've got to... Uh, have a, yeah, twiddle around with it. What we can do, random hold off. <laughs> oh, I like the sound of random hold off. Anyway, if you don't know about uh, trigger hold off, I've probably done a video on that, have I? Anyway, um, basically it'll take the first trigger, then it'll wait, it'll hold off for a certain number of milliseconds before it arms itself again, before it can uh, trigger the next one. Anyway, this is probably not the best uh, example for that, but you may have to twiddle around with that. And this would actually be a classic uh, use case for segmented memory as well. So if we go into our acquire menu and we go segmented memory, uh, let's set up, say, 100 segments, segmented memory, boom, it's captured it. And then we can just scroll through those and you can see how it's capturing those alternately. So, yeah, there you go. It seems to be doing proper alternate triggering. One, you can see the, the frame. It just alternates between... Those two channels like that, if you get out of segmented mode and just single shot capture it, then it's just going to be, it's going to appear random, but it is actually doing an alternate uh, or trigger. Great. And this uh, Siglent 1104XE here, we can actually get it working, but we have to use a pattern type. We don't actually have a specific or slash uh, alternate uh, trigger function so we've got to use a pattern which is designed for digital and you can actually get in there and set those and uh, I set them both to low um, ironically I can't actually set them both to high it doesn't work just goes all over the place but low will get that to work so we can actually cludge that using what's designed to be a digital logic function. Now, in this particular case, we happen to be using uh, digital uh, waveforms here. So you could come a guts completely on that with other uh, types of waveforms. We just happen to be able to get this, you know, to kind of sort of work. And we should be able to see this because most scopes have uh, pattern triggering on them these days. So you can sort of get it, but just remember, it's not the same as proper uh, or triggering that we saw on the uh, Keysight one. Now, you can achieve this uh, same thing on old school analog scopes. Um, unfortunately, my Tech 2465, which I haven't fully repaired yet, I didn't realize this, 
but the uh, the B time base is actually buggered on it. Anyway, you can see that there's uh, options for uh, B uh, trigger delay hold off. So uh, we could potentially get uh, both on the screen at once there. Can the Roden Schwartz RTB 2000 do it? Well, let's go into trigger types here. Looks like it doesn't have it, but pattern triggering. Whoa, fancy pantsy. And just like the uh, key site, all of the digital channels, the four analog channels, and we've got an and or or function. So it's basically, and we can set um, those going true. And if we do that, there you go, works an absolute treat. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, flickering action happening there. No, stupid me is in auto trigger mode. You need normal trigger mode, I suspect. That might work. No, it's still the same. We might have to use hold. Anyway, you shouldn't use auto trigger mode. You should be using normal because you don't want the auto trigger to uh, accidentally trigger when you don't really intend it to. Seems a little bit better there if I do the hold time. It just seems a function of the ore pattern on this particular scope. Anyway, does the business. And this Rigo uh, DS2000 series scope here, we can get it working on the uh, pattern mode here. Seems to be a bit quirky. You can't actually select both the rising edge on both of them, but I was able to get it working both of them on low like that. So yeah, does the business. And the venerable DS1054Z, we do have a pattern option down in here. Let's go check it out. Whoa, lots of relays clicked. Anyway, yep, we can, looks like we might be able to do the business. Once again, the DS1054Z, I cannot set both of them to a, an edge type. So there's some sort of weird limitation. Anyway, if I set both of those to low, Winner, winner, chicken dinner. But let's take a look at an interesting scope here, the UNI-T UPO uh, 3000E series, among a couple of other scopes on the market, including the, I believe, the original Rigold DS1052E. Not the Z, the old, the old school E model, which I reviewed in uh, EEV blog number one video. That actually has a feature called dual time base. So if we actually go into the horizontal menu here, let's have a look. Time base is normal, okay? But if we go in there and select independent time base, what we get now is you can see we've got four independent time bases for the four channels. We don't need three. Oh, you can't actually turn that off. Really? Wow. Okay. Function disabled. Oh, it forces all four channels on. That's kind of weird. Didn't know about that. Anyway, um, we have an independent time base. So if we select channel one, we can adjust the time base independently on channel one. Now, if we select channel two, we can independently select that and it's triggering off the two different ones. Of course, the advantage of having different time bases for uh, each channel is that we can see as much detail as we like. Isn't that absolutely fantastic? But just be aware, they are different time bases. So if you're going in there and, uh, you know, measuring stuff like visually off the screen, then you can potentially come a guts of there forgetting that you've got the different time bases. But these uh, dual time base scopes are, you know, a reasonably rare on the uh, market. So, but this UNI-T happens to have it. There's a couple of other models out there. Let us know if your one has it. But anyway, this does the business without having to muck around with your triggering. Because by default, when you enable a dual time-based scope, it has a separate trigger for each one. It's actually triggering off channel one and channel two totally independently. So technically, dual time-based scope is better than the alternate trigger system, because if now, if we actually single, if we stop that, or if we single shot capture that, we will actually get both at the same time. Oh, single shot capture, come on. I'm pressing the single button, I swear. Single. Function is disabled. You can't, oh my goodness. I, I hadn't used this scope in depth, unbelievable. Single shot capture mode disabled in dual time base. Dual time base scopes are great, but for some reason, manufacturers, well, <laughs> you know, it's more complicated. So you know the reason why. It's more complicated to in implement a proper dual time base and dual uh, independent triggering system. But 
It's really handy, so that's pretty neat. And I do believe the uh, Tektronix entry level, the TBS or Tech Basic Scope series, also has uh, dual time base as well. GW Instec GDS uh, 1000 series, nah, doesn't have the triggering. And our Tektronix uh, MDO 3000 here, yep, sure enough, it has logic down here. So we can go in, we can define our inputs exactly like the uh, Keysight and the Roden Schwartz, and we can set both to high like that. We can define our logic as OR, trigger when goes true, and you can set up your um, thresholds and uh, stuff as well. And there we go, that works. It's a little bit sort of clunkier, but it does the business. And I had to set the uh, thresholds up here. As you can see, if you adjust the threshold, you can see the Channel 1 threshold going up and then boom, Channel 1 is gone, gone ski. Because we don't have the independent threshold set. So just be aware of that when you're playing around with it, trying to get it working. You need both of those thresholds. And how about the Siglent SDS 5000? Well, well, we've got a pattern here. Let's see if we can do the business on that. But it logic, oh yeah, there we go. Or, yep. Here we go, and it disables the ones we haven't got on. Nice. So we'll go high, we'll go high. We can set the independent level values. That's too low. We need to tweak that up a bit. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's all good. And yep, that works a treat. Look at that. Beautiful. Bobby Dazzler. And once again, it's not dual time base. We're only capturing one of those at a time, so it's alternate trigger. Or it's going or, 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 or. Actually, out of all the scopes that did that, I think the uh, the Keysight and the Siglent both give the nicest, most responsive uh, display on that. If those playing along at home, you wouldn't know that. Anyway. And check this out. The O1 uh, XDS 3200. This one, actually, if you go into the trigger menu here, Edge, okay. If you Well, single. If you go into here, nothing there. But look, Alt. Alternate trigger straight in Beautiful and it also supports logic as well. I've set up logic with the uh, or mode here and XOR and XNOR and 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 Of course and will never work because they're never both true at the same time you saw that um, On the uh, main time base so you can set that goes true. So that one's actually got the true alternate trigger mode isn't that neat? Kind of like that. You can't single shot capture in alt mode though. But you can run stop and get both at the same time. Winner. So only one of my scopes seemed to have had like a proper old school alternate trigger mode even though you couldn't do it in single mode. And the key sight is the only one that has both pattern and or. And of course the pattern one does work but uh, the all one you can set um, both of your channels or uh, you can basically uh, set all of your channels to uh, Slopes where you can't do that and I found this pretty consistent across all the other scopes as well If you go into pattern triggering you can only set and it does actually tell you this in the manual if you read it that only one of them can actually be a rising edge. So check it out, right? If I try and set the first one to a rising edge, I can do that. Try and set the second one to a rising edge, you can't. You can only have one as a rising edge, which I don't really know why that limitation exists. Um, if you do know, <laughs> please leave it in the comments. But anyway, just bear in mind that if you're using pattern trigger on your scope and it doesn't have a true alternate trigger or an OR function like this uh, key sight, then really it's only good for digital channels. If you're trying to do this on analog waveforms, eh, you may not be so lucky. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that and found it useful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and share the video and all that sort of jazz because uh, that really helps a lot because YouTube algorithm kind of sucks these days. doesn't really share very well. Anyway, as always, discuss in the comments or over on the EEV blog forum. Catch you next time.